Hi, my name's Isaac, and today I'm gonna to walk you through my Sony FX3 B-cam setup. My A-cam is a fully rigged out FX3, so there's two reasons why I might use this B-cam. The first is as a second camera angle. So if I'm shooting handheld with the A-cam, I usually have a second camera operator, either going handheld or gimbal with this B-cam, that way I can get a second angle of the action. Um, if it's a small shoot, like say an interview or something, I might just have this on a tripod for the second angle. So I've got the A-cam and B-cam just offering us different angles of the same interview. Um, the other reason I'll use this B-cam is actually as an A-cam. So if I've got a quick run and gun job or something that I know I just want a small tiny body to shoot with, um, I'll just leave the rig at home and just take this single camera. The reason why that's a big advantage is that this easily fits into my camera bag and I can just pull out and shoot with it as the FX3 is designed to do, whereas my other FX3 that's fully rigged out, that doesn't even fit in my camera bag and takes too long to assemble if it's just a quick little video. So that's the two purposes for the three setups you're about to see. My B cam always lives in the small rig half cage, as you can see here. Now this cage includes a rail mount here that I don't really use, but it's also got a cold shoe mount here that I use all the time. Um, I've got a NATO rail across here, which I sometimes use a handle on, but not often. And then on the bottom, I've got a whole bunch of mounting options and I've got my Weeble S Arca Swiss quick release plate on here at the bottom. I generally leave this on all the time and this is perfectly balanced for the gimbal. So I can just put this on with either the 20 or the 35 mil lens and it's just perfectly balanced, ready to go. That way I don't have to spend time every time I'm doing a shoot balancing the gimbal. I could if I have to and I'm pretty quick at it now, but it's so nice just being able to clip this in and just get straight to work. So that's the basic package. The most common B cam configuration is definitely gimbal mode. So this is a Weeble S. So what I love about having it already set up ready to go is that I can just clip the quick release plate that's already mounted to the body full time into here. And then we're ready to film just by plugging in this one HDMI cable. What I've also done to the Weeble is I've added this small rig arm here, which um, is a tip I got off my friend Daniel. And what this allows me to do is I can easily go into suitcase mode and move like that, or I can have it upright like that without having to use the legs and move them and reattach them and all that. Another cool thing about it is it gives me this cold shoe mount here, which I've mounted a small HD five inch monitor onto. Now this is using the small HD five inch arm that you get with the monitor. And what I love about this is I can tilt the monitor to any angle. So wherever I'm shooting, if I'm shooting hand, like suitcase mode, I can do this. Or as I come upright, I can just rotate it to match whichever way I'm viewing. I also love that it's on axis with the camera rather than the monitor being left or right of the camera, just cause that feels nicer to me. Another thing I've added to the camera is this remote control here. So this is a small rig Bluetooth Sony remote and it just screws in with a uh, quarter inch thread here. Um, there's a whole place, a bunch of places you can mount it. The reason why I like this rather than using the built-in controls that come with the gimbal is this works um, even when it's not attached to the gimbal. So firstly, if I'm shooting a talking head video, I can just hold the remote and start stop recording as I need to um, without having to reach over and press anything. And then when I come on the gimbal, I can just mount this and then I'm good to go. And then if I want to take the camera off the gimbal, I don't have to unplug a second USB cable that was connected to the gimbal just to enable start stop. Um, it sounds like a tiny thing, but it's so nice to work with because instead of pressing this and then readjusting my grip and stuff, I'm just sort of always ready to go with that button there. The second configuration of my B-cam setup is run and gun mode. So this is a much smaller, lighter setup than my A-cam that's fully rigged out. And it's also more portable than a gimbal and also more discreet. So the main times I'd use this is if my B-cam operator wants to shoot handheld rather than using a gimbal or tripod or monopod. Or if it's a behind the scenes video and I'm just getting a friend to get some shots and they're not really familiar with cameras, this is more than enough that won't intimidate them, but um, allow me to get some really high quality footage. Um, or also if I'm shooting somewhere I'm not supposed to be shooting, this is a lot more discreet. Um, and lastly, if I'm just lazy and don't want to take my big setup, then this works fine. So what I've got here is a five inch monitor and I'm using a NATO mount on the camera. This is one that came with the small rig kit. Um, and then I've just mounted that on top there. This particular mount allows you to swivel this way as well as tilt. So this means I can shoot low to my chest like this and see what I'm doing. This is a really nice way to work with, just seeing the monitor there. That's probably a better angle there. Or if I wanna shoot some portrait video, say for Instagram, I can just rotate the monitor like so. And it's actually a really nice way to work shooting portrait video with an external monitor tilted up towards you. And it's still small and light. We can run around and get a lot of content really quickly, but it's still really high quality and really nice to work with. If I hold the camera like this when I'm shooting portrait video, it actually gives me quite a lot of stability, even though it's not any proper rigging or anything, but just the enhanced length from here really gives me a lot more balance. 
Now for me personally, I hate using the monitor on the back of the camera. It's just so small and dim and the colors don't look nice. Just when I'm using it, I really can't tell if things are in focus or if it's exposed correctly. So I much prefer using an external monitor. So that's why I've got the five inch monitor on here. If I'm shooting dialogue with this running gun setup, it's really cool. There's a cold shoe mount right here where I can mount my Rode wireless receiver. And then it plugs in here. All the cables stay pretty neat and tidy. They're not running all over the place or anything. So it still stays small and light and allows me to record dialogue. However, there's one problem. On this FX3, but not my other FX3, if I have a wireless audio receiver plugged in, I get a lot of um, electrical interference noise on the left channel. Now, I don't get that on my other FX3, um, and I've tried a whole bunch of different microphones. I've tried three different trans uh, transmitters and receivers. All of them in this create noise in the audio recording in camera, and all of them don't do that on my other FX3. So it's definitely something about this body itself. It also doesn't happen if I use the external handle on top, and plug into any of those ports, the XLR or the three and a half. It's only when I'm plugging a wireless audio receiver directly into the camera body itself on this camera that I get the problem. Now I know other people have spoken about this, so it seems to be a widespread problem. One way I've worked around this noise problem is to use the Rode Wireless Go 2s, which record internally on the transmitter. Um, and so the audio is good enough that's transmitted into the camera. It's got a bit of a whine, electrical whine to it, but it's good enough that I can sync the audio in post, um, which is another step that I don't really want to do, but I've done it a couple of times and it's worked fine. Um, the reason I haven't returned the camera yet is because the camera store I bought it from said that they have to send it back to Sony and it will take at least a couple of weeks and I can't be that long without a camera because I need it for work. So I found for now, I either shoot um, directly in camera on my A-cam if I'm using wireless audio or I'll put the handle on this B-cam which will also work fine or my third way is to use the Rode Wireless Go 2s and then sync the audio and post from the transmitter. All three result in perfect audio. The third option obviously being a couple of extra steps in post Production, which isn't a big deal, but I try and avoid that wherever possible. My third setup is a lightweight tripod setup. So this is used for if I want to just travel somewhere really lightweight using like say just a backpack with all my camera gear and then just an easy small tripod that fits in the camera bag rather than the big elaborate setup I've got for the A-cam over here. To make that happen, the first piece I got was the Manfrotto B3 tripod. And then I've added a small rig Arca Swiss plate to the top of the Manfrotto 501 PL plate. So what the advantage of this is I just leave this in the tripod full time, it never leaves. And then from there, this mount that's the same one that's already perfectly balanced for the gimbal can just slide right in here. Cool. And now we're ready to go. So it's that quick. If I want to swap to gimbal mode, I can just slide this out and it's already fully balanced, ready to go on the gimbal. That's the advantage of this setup here rather than using just the Manfrotto plate. Sometimes I'll need to record more than two channels of audio, say if it's a three person interview, or sometimes I just want clean audio directly into the camera because I don't want to sync audio in post and we've got that wireless transmitter issue. So in those times, I'll use the handle that came with the FX3. Now I've made some modifications to this. The first thing is a 3D printed uh, part from the Creator Cup. Um, I live in Australia, they live in the US, so it was too expensive to get it shipped, so I just had my friend print one out, thanks Jared. Um, and what this does is it gives you a nice thing to mount this small rig cheese plate on top. Now on top of that, I've put two cold shoes and this little cable management thing. The reason I've got the cable management thing is it allows me to run this cable from the two XLR channels into this stereo connector here. So that's what I'll usually plug the Rode Wireless Go 2 receiver into and mount it on one side here. That way the two channels of wireless audio become channels one and two on here. For channels three and four, um, there's a few different options. I'll usually have a shotgun microphone. So either the Rode Micro or the Rode Video mic NTG either way and that'll plug into channel 3 and 4 here. The reason why I plug this into channel 3 and 4 is because this microphone specifically requires plug-in power. If I was using the Rode NTG it really wouldn't matter with that and the um, Rode Wireless Go receiver which one was in which channel but if using this you definitely need plug-in power provided only on these channels here. And then from here I'll just mount that directly to the camera. As you can see here, I've also got a NATO rail mounted at the top here. Now, I originally had a cold shoe screwed into one of the single threads here, but um, I was feeling a little bit unconfident, like it might come loose at an inopportune time. So I swapped it for the NATO rail, which has two screws here, which means it's definitely not gonna come undone and it's very secure. And then from that NATO rail, I'm mounting the same five inch monitor from earlier. So that will just slide in like so. 
And again, it meets all my favorite criteria because it's on axis with the lens and it also has that tilt and swivel functionality when I need it. From here, I can then just mount that all on the camera and we're good to go for our B-cam setup. There's a few different situations which I'll use this tripod setup for. Um, sometimes it'll just be my B-cam setup if I'm also using the main A-cam as the main camera angle for interviews. Another way is if this is the only camera for the interview. So in that case, it'll be rigged out just as you see now. Um, I'll often do that if it's just shooting some quick social media content where they don't need multiple camera angles and everything fits in a camera bag and it's super quick. Um, another way we've been using this recently is for live streaming. So I'll plug a USB cable from here into a laptop and it allows the client to get a really high quality uh, live stream. You know, they get the 1.8 background blur. And then what you can also do with a camera is record at the same time as you're live streaming. So that means the live stream, I think it's only 720p-ish um, that the webcam software outputs to the camera over USB, but that's good enough for a live stream because it's compressed and pretty crappy anyway. Um, but it means after the fact, I can then give them a nice 4K copy of the live stream. Obviously see it's the only the angle from the camera so when they cut to other camera angles say in an interview or something they'd be missing that but if it's more of like a webinar setup that they're doing often they only want the the single camera setup anyway and they don't want all the distractions uh, that come up in a video conference so um, we've also been using it as a webcam a bit recently which is a unexpected thing I didn't think we'd be using it for that but there's actually quite a bit of demand for that so that's the three ways I'll use this B-cam setup. It's either a gimbal setup that's perfectly balanced, ready to go most of the time, or it's a really lightweight handheld setup that's super easy to pack up into a small footprint and I can sort of get in and out of situations quickly. Or it's a tripod setup, sometimes with a four channel audio module on top, sometimes for a live stream, but also again, super easy to transport compared to the A-cam. It might sound like I'm hating on the A-cam because it's too big, but I, I love it and use the A-cam more than I use this. So that's why the A-cam stays rigged out, ready to go. But um, the times when I don't need the rigging, this really comes in handy. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could like or subscribe um, and let me know if you have any comments or feedback below. I'd love to hear from everyone. Um, thanks a lot and catch you in the next video.